he has money in his pocket to do things that he wants to do. Because the thing is, a lot of women want the guy to be the financial provider and the nurturer. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Um, you know, females, when they, some, not all, when they go on a date, you know what I'm saying, they want the guy to spend on them. Like, if, you ain't, if you're not treating me to a nice, extravagant dinner, then you don't really like me like that. If you're not, I feel like it, you should pick out my dress, too. Like, you know, what, but for a guy, he, you could buy him, like, some fresh socks and a pack of white tees, and he's going to be happy because those are things that he needs on his daily basis. Sometimes women want things that they don't actually need. Like, an expensive dinner is not going to determine whether this guy actually likes you or for the guy it's not going to determine whether she likes you. It's just going to determine either she going to see that you got money or you're going to be like, oh, she easy, so I'm about to slide in. I feel like maybe people got more creative. Like, I went on this date one time, and he asked me what kind of date do you want to go on? I was like, create a date out of $20. He was like, $20? What, what type of date? I'm... I'm like, get creative, like, because I'm a creative person. So how creative can you be with this? You only got $20. You can't spend no more. You can spend less if you want, but $20, let's see. He was kind of stuck. He was stuck. Um, I think I just started talking and <laughs> forgot the question. <laughs> No, what 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 surprised you the most about that? Oh, yeah. Um oh yeah, so that simple and you really have to like talk to guys because you'll be you'll feel like they should understand something, but they might we think emotionally guys think logically. So they think A to Z. I mean everything else leads to Z. So it's not with A, it's it ends with Z. Females is like, okay, A and B, but C, I don't know. I got to turn around and go back to B because something don't seem right about this. Like, uh, because why they didn't pronounce this alphabet? I think this should be pronounced a little bit different. Like, it doesn't make sense before guys like, well, they pronounce it like that, then that's how it is. As long as this, it's going to get me to my destination. So... You, females have more power than they think in a relationship, but I feel like it's just used wrong. So if you see the table conversation, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? What are your thoughts on that conversation? In what aspect? Elaborate. How, how, how do you like? So it's it's a debate, right? So yeah. men are asking women, "What do you bring to the table?" Right. Women are telling men, "I am the table." Right. Men are saying, "I have to do this, this, and this." And you feel like just showing up is enough. So, do you think one side is right, one side is wrong? They're both wrong, and how? Um, I don't feel like there is one side right or or wrong. What I do feel like, though, is a lot of people ask what you can bring to the table, but they can't actually bring that to the table themselves. And it goes both ways. Like, a woman will want a guy to nurture her, take care of her, pay for her bills, get her hair done, get her nails done, get her feet done. Like, really invest. But does, ha but does not have any knowledge and how to do the same thing for the guy. Um, guys will want a woman, but they only want the benefits of the woman. Not the whole, like, a woman, she's going to tell you what she like and what she don't like. She's going to hold you accountable. 
a lot of guys don't like being held accountable for things. But a lot of women don't like being held accountable either. So I feel like, and a lot of people that I see that ask that question, they normally don't have everything that breaks on the table. Like, if you really look at the people that ask, because honestly, as a woman, as a man, if you actually get to know a person, I don't know. You don't have to ask a person what they bring to the table because they could tell you what they bring to the table, but you have to see it. A lot of people talk, but aren't action. Yeah. I, and I feel like it shouldn't be, it should be what does this person bring to the table for you? Because I can tell you what I bring to the table, but it, not, it may not be what you need. It may be what another man needs. You may bring all these things to the table as well, but that might not be, as a woman, what I need from you. So that doesn't mean you're a bad guy. You'll be a good guy, but you're just not a good guy that I need, and vice versa. Same thing for female. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next conversation is uh, who's the prize? Both. Um, especially if you're talking about balance and the guy can't have everything but then the female lacking because, again, he could just be by himself. If the female has everything, then the guy is lacking, then what are we doing? There's no balance. If you both are prizes and you're coming into this together and you're trying to build, you're equally bringing something to the table to balance out the whole table. So while the, the guy brings the table, the woman gets the table ready. It's it's a it's a a joint thing. It's no how they say there's no I and we. It's no I and we. It's no I in foundation building. If you're a team, we're working together. Um, so that's how I feel about that. The next social media thing, the fifty fifty conversation. Some people are saying. We should split all the financial responsibility 50-50. Other people are saying the man needs to cover 100% because the woman is doing this, 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 and this. Where do you fall on that conversation? Okay. As being someone who has been on my own since 18, I'm 29 now. I am perfectly... If, if me and my partner are making like around the same amount, or maybe he's making a little bit more than me, I am completely okay with splitting the bills because I've been paying all my bills on my own for so long. Half of that would be beneficial to me. So for me, it wouldn't be a problem. Like if I'm paying half of what I pay now, we could split the bills because it's benefiting you and it's benefiting me. The cost of living isn't like how it used to be back in the day. So I personally feel like if if you and your man are splitting the bills to each his own, this is how I feel, and then you're bringing that peace, ultimately he's probably going to wind up spending that money on you anyway because he's like, she's working with me. She don't even be asking for this much she like it's a compromise now if the guy wants to take care of everything by all means I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that if that's something that he wants to do but I also feel like there's nothing wrong with splitting bills either because it's helping the both of you like what are you losing by splitting bills with each other he has money in his pocket to do things that he wants to do because the thing is a lot of women want the guy to be the financial provider and the nurturer. Like, I want you to pay all the bills, but then I also want you to take me on trips. I also want you to take me on nice dinners. I also want you to go all out on these holidays with gifts. So then it's like, well, you, want, you must want a rich man because <laughs> you want him to do all of this, but when does he have time to do things for himself? But if you're splitting, he can still spoil himself. You can still spoil yourself. And y'all can still spoil each other because y'all have the finances to do so. Versus 
him spending everything and then you having money. And I've seen this a lot. There are some females that'll go all out for their man, but the man will go out for the female and then she will get him like a little few things. And it's like, well, dang, that don't compare to what you wanted him to do for you. So I think, um, I don't think it's really fair to be honest. Um, I'm not, I do feel like women go through a lot and endure a lot. But in this particular topic, I feel like guys are looked at to bring so much, but we don't give them that space to always keep going. So. So, and I, I think that leads to the next kind of part of the, the conversation because some of the conversation I see from men is, number one, we don't feel like women fully understand statistics or fully care about statistics and numbers. And what you'll see happen sometimes is a woman will have, by a lot of metrics, a top 5% man, especially a black man. But she doesn't necessarily treat him like that. So like a friend of mine, for instance, makes six figures, master's degree holder, black man, six foot eight, 300 pounds. Like he's an anomaly. But he was telling me his girl treated him like she could get another one of him. Just because maybe she had men in her DMs or she had she is around men and things like that. So men of a certain status still don't feel like we're appreciated by our women because it's like, eh, you think you all this, but you're really not. Even though the numbers say, and when you're looking at the statistics, this black man under 30 making six figures is like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, rare. so why do you think that is? Ego. Um, and power. Uh, and also, you got to think about the status of the female, too, because if he is up there and she is below him, then it's like she's kind of, I don't know, I feel like it's narcissistic behavior a little bit. Like, you can't, re I mean, really, like, you really think you're going to find because the thing is, people don't, karma is real. So if you have that good man like that and he's doing good by you, that is very rare. Nine out of 10, the dudes in your DM, what, he asked you how your day was. They don't care about your day. They just looking at you and how you look and what you could probably do for them. Or, you know, guys are visual people. So if you look good, they could probably be undressing you with their whole eyes. And then after they get what they want, they're gone. But you got this man over here that he actually got himself together because he's not doing everything how you want him to do or how it looks to you. Now it's a problem. So now you're reaching for attention to someone else instead of communicating with him because he might not even know that he's not doing this right. But because you feel like he's supposed to read your mind and he's not reading your mind or he's not bowing down at your feet, then you, you want to let social media, which is temporary, because you got to go home with him. This, this social media is, you get on, you get off. These dudes don't know. Oh, and don't let the female, he deal with a lot of her emotions and mood swings and stuff. You, you, oh, you think this dude about to be patient enough and deal with what I deal with? No. But because they're, and this is a guy thing too, not just females, but you asked me on this, this side, uh, a lot of the time, if, if you a female that look good, I think not all females, but some females feel like your looks can get you further than they actually can. Explain. Like, I feel like you can, being a beautiful female, can get you on a lot of doors. Having a nice smile can get you on a lot of doors. 
But are all of those doors the right doors? Because once they start talking to you, can you hold an intellectual conversation? Can you ask the right questions? Can you actually sit and let a person talk without disturbing them or interrupting them or feeling like, no, 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 no. You're not right. You're not right. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Because it's really like this. Let the person talk. Observe what they're saying because also this goes back to something that you said. I feel like if us as women sat back and like just listen, we would get a lot more answers. But a lot of times we want to be right all the time. So once the guy start talking and then he start making sense, then we'd be like, no, 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 no. But wait, though, what about when you did this? But we're not talking about when I did this last week, we are talking about you right now at this moment and how this made me feel or vice versa. So. Mm. That's interesting. Cause uh, Kevin Samuels talks about a lot of these things that you touched on. So let me, let me ask you, why do you feel like, why do you think he's famous? What, what, what do you think is going on? And what do you think it says about the black male and female dynamic right now? Um, that led to him being famous? He's a content creator. So he talk about very controversial topics. I feel like the questions that he asks challenge a lot of people's egos. So you have people jumping on there. Because, you know, at first I was like, mm. I'm not really a fan because the ones that I saw were like guy versus female. But he'll he'll push you in your place. He'll but I also feel like he's a content creator. He talks about the things that are like popular right now, the things that's happening. Like the nurture the question you ask, like nurturing and things like that. The, the way the wave is going, a lot of us women are becoming masculine. And it's because we were brought up to be strong black women. But with being strong black women, we tend to take that to a point where I don't need a man for anything. And I feel like men need women and women need men. So I, I, I do feel like he talks about things that really bother with people because it is it's, it's everywhere so when you talk about a topic like that you have people like mm -mm, no he's just targeting us that's not fair but your reaction is actually showing is proving his, his point like you, the way you're getting defensive is showing why he said this exact statement male female whatever the case is so I feel like the people who don't agree with him or are actually doing what he said you shouldn't do, then those are the people that's like, uh-uh, he don't like women. Whatever his thing might be, but then it's the guys that he calls out and it's like, nah, that's not me, that's not me, I don't be doing that. I know what type of dude, I'm a good dude. I feel like if you always gotta talk about the type of person you are, you probably not that person. Because your action is speak for itself. People, you don't have to always say you a good dude. Or you don't always have to say you a good woman. Your, act, your action is going to speak for it. So I just feel like it's a lot of egos that he be touching. And they be in their feels. And they be not feeling it. But the truth hurts. What, what's um, one or two things that you are curious about black men? or a certain type of black man? Like, do you have things that you still haven't figured out or still doesn't make sense to you? Why is it that a black man will ask for a good woman, but then once he gets that woman, then he abuses her, her understanding, her love, her heart, um, and then blame her for the things that he has caused. And now she's crazy or 
she's being too emotional or she's overreacting or... Describe this black man. I'm getting to a point with this. I'm getting to the point with this. Um, I do want to know that, but I also know that a guy can only do what a woman allows. But then that also goes to healing because it sounds like if she's allowing this and he's doing this, then both of them are slightly broken. So maybe you don't need to be in a relationship. Maybe you need to focus on healing. But I do want to know that question though. I mean, I kind of know the answer, but then you also have to think statistically, women are looked at as if a man doesn't have money or if he's if he can't do for I heard a, a, a question that was like, will a, a woman love a man without money? And there are women out there that will because I've been that female. But then it's looked at as well. You allow that to happen, though. So. I mean, kind of give me a break here because. I'm allowing this to happen, but yet I won't love a person like this. But I am loving this person like this, and I am giving this person chances. I am trying to be understanding. I am trying to look at it from this person's perspective, but I allowed this to happen, so it's my fault. I think what happens is and men and women do this. We fall in love with our idea of a person. And when I say our idea, it doesn't mean like who they were or who they are. We fall in love with who we think they could be. And I'm all about, you need to fall in love with who they want to be. So I'll give you an example. There was a a lady I was talking to um, at this event a while back, and she, she said she moved to Charlotte. I lived in Charlotte at the time. She moved in sh to Charlotte to find a black man. And she works in corporate America, but she was saying that um, she's willing to even date a mechanic. And I was like, how would you do that? She was like, well, I have connections. I have money. I have this and that. So I could help him grow into a mechanic who runs five different workshops. And I thought to myself, you don't really want a mechanic. You want a mechanic who wants to be a boss. What if he just wants to be a mechanic? What if he just wants to be the best mechanic for some franchise? But she's fallen in love with her idea of the guy. Because at the end of the day, like, and this is a mistake men make. If I haven't become the type of man I want to be for myself, I can never become the type of man you want me to be for you. So the reason why a lot of guys, to answer your question, uh, put women in that uh, scenario is because he's still trying to build himself. And the worst thing a woman can do is try to build a man. It never works. Ever, 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 ever works. It's a I terrible agree. idea. I agree. So, okay, I kind of have a question. Talk to me. So what about a lot of times you have the angry black woman, right? But then you have a nice woman who will be nurturing and loving and caring. Sometimes I feel like it's no balance for us because if you're stern and you're like, I'm not dealing with this, I'm not tolerating this, then even if you're not being angry, you're looked at as an angry black woman. But then if you're nice, you're loving, you're talking, you give that guy that vulnerable space, then a lot of guys don't look at it as, wow, she's an amazing woman. Like, I'm being vulnerable. They automatically look at it as, what can I get out of this? Because she's so nice. She's probably easy. She's probably easy. So I'm going to just, Here's just the truth. shy. Here's the truth. I think we talk a lot about how a lot of black women are in their masculine energy. A lot of black men are in their feminine energy. You know, I think it's a result of being raised by single mothers. I think it's, it's a result of being praised for unmasculine attributes. 
like how many women you can get, right. and how many this and that. Right. So what happens is we've created a scenario as a culture where black men are attracted to men with vaginas. For sure. And black women are attracted to women with dicks. For sure. And it never, it, it never works out. And it never, ever, ever works out. <laughs> but unfortunately, work. like, and th this is the part that really, you know, pisses me off because we don't incentivize the behavior we claim we want. Right. Like the, the, the good dude, the, the, the dude who is a man and who does operate on integrity and principle, he's not the dude getting pussy. You know, he's, he's the dude in somebody's friend zone and yeah. he saved as somebody's food nigga. But the dude who you can't really rely on him. If, if your car broke down on the side of the road, nigga don't know how to change a tire. Right. That's who makes you, you know, giddy and butterflies in your stomach. So, like, why is that? What's going on? The image. The image of social media. The music. I mean, people following trends. I feel like. Uh, yeah, for sure. Media. Um, people not getting to know people. Um, and honestly, I'm speaking for myself too. Now being 29, I think differently. But back then, it was more so like, you're, you're attracted to this guy. This guy physically looks like what you want in a, in a man, but now you're trying to make him the man that you want him to be. Like, if this dude is a cheater, but appearance-wise, he looks like the type of man you want, now you feel like, oh, I'm about to go in because I got that good, good. I'm about to, I'm about to make him like, no, he he cheater. He's still gonna be a cheater. Like, let me ask you this: Do you think the reason why women right now are prioritizing looks is because they're in their masculine and men prioritize looks? For sure, for sure. Um, oh yeah, because then I mean, let's think about it now. Guys with the gray sweatpants, and that's like. Ooh, look at that. Like, the way females are now is the equivalent to how guys, dang, look at her butt, not dang the butt. Like, now females, like, aren't, like, aggressive. Like, oh, like, can I just wear? But see, this is the thing, too. We are doing the same things that we don't like dudes to do. Why can't, if I just want to post a picture in my bathing suit, why you got to, like, it's just a bathing suit. Like, why you gotta sexualize everything? But how can we get guy get upset at guys for sexualizing everything when a guy can't even wear gray sweatpants without them talking about like his print? Or like the dude have to have these ooh muscles and cut and stuff like that with the nice lips and nice hair and ooh like like why can't he just do his thing. So I do feel like it's, it's the roles are flipping. One of, one, of the, one of the ladies I interviewed, she said something that really stuck with me and I thought it was interesting. I want you to respond to it. She said, part of the reason we go for the Pookies and Ray Rays as opposed to the nigga in a suit is because, so she said it's two things. She said, number one, I'm more prepared to deal with if Pookie lets me down versus if a good man lets me down. And number two is, she said, I don't want no dude who's better than me because I might not be ready to step my game up to meet him on his level. Do you think there's any truth to that? Like on a large scale, not necessarily for you. And like, how do we get there? I feel like that has a lot to do with self-love because if you're confident in yourself, you're not going to worry about whether this guy looks better than you or not. No, not looks, but is like, 
you know, based on metrics, like he's a top 1% guy, you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't want to necessarily have to step my game up immediately because I'm going to have to step my game up. If I need to, if I'm going to be with Barack Obama, I can't continue to be who I am right now. So it's safer or it's easier to be with Pookie. So you're settling because that's what it sounds like. Because if, if you want this type of person, then what you need to do is be single and work on yourself until you get to that point because you think about vibrations. If you heighten your vibration, you're gonna attract what you want. Not all, but a lot of the times, if you work on yourself, pour into yourself, love yourself, this goes for a man or a woman, um, it's gonna be that person out there that's gonna see you and be like, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. Like, that's what I feel. I feel like a lot of females' vibrations either don't be heightened or it be heightened, but then they go lower because, again, a power thing. They feel like if he has less than me, then I could control the situation more. But if he has more than me, I'm in the, there's no controlling for me. He has the control, but then that, that, that ties into leading, letting a man lead. Because a lot of females these days walk in their masculinity, they don't know how to allow the man to lead because they want to lead. They want it to be how they want it to be. They, they want to be in charge. They want to make the calls. They don't know how it feels to have a man that actually love you in that seat making calls. It's sort of like an out-of-body experience. Especially if they haven't been brought up around that with their dad or like him showing her like, this is how a man is. This is how I feel like that ties into, well, how is your relationship with your father? Or how is your relationship with your mother? It, it starts from somewhere. You don't just think like that for no reason.